Okay, welcome back. So in this video, I would like to prove that the Galois group of the real numbers over Q is the trivial group. And I'm going to follow the proof uh, outline from the Dummett and Foot book to do this. Um, so the first step is we're going to assume that sigma is an element of G. I'll just refer to this as G. Um, and the first thing I want to observe is that if I take any real number x, um, that the following is true. So because sigma is, um, by assumption, a field automorphism, uh, sigma of x squared, um, this is equal to sigma of x times x, like this. And so because sigma is an automorphism, I can write this as sigma of x times sigma of x. And this is the same as sigma of x squared. So one way of stating this is that sigma sends the square of a real number to the square of a real number. So now I'd like to use that to show that sigma sends uh, positive real numbers to positive real numbers. So I'm going to assume that uh, x is a real number greater than 0. And I want to show that sigma of x is also bigger than 0. So this is my goal now. And because x is uh, bigger than 0, I can talk about the square root of x, um, which wouldn't exist if x was less than 0. Um, and one way that I can write uh, sigma of x is I can write this as sigma of square root of x times square root of x, or sigma of square root of x squared. Um, and we just showed that uh, this is equal to um, sigma of square root of x squared. But this is the square of a real number, and um, in, in uh, yeah, this is the, the um, square of a real number. And um, I also know that, uh, and I also know that this is not equal to zero uh, because square root of x is not zero and sigma is a bijection because sigma is an automorphism. Great. So what I've just shown is that sigma necessarily has to send um, a positive real number to a positive real number. And now what I want to notice um, is that this implies that if I have two real numbers, a and b, and if a is less than b, then this actually implies that sigma of a is less than sigma of b. So uh, if sigma is an element of the Galois group G, then sigma necessarily has to be order preserving in this way. And the reason that this is true is because if A is less than B, well, this means that B minus A is a positive number. Um, but we just showed that sigma sends positive real numbers to positive real numbers. So this means that sigma of B minus A is also positive. It's also positive. Um, but sigma is uh, assumed to be an automorphism. So it's linear with respect to addition and scalars and stuff like that. So this means that I can break this up and I can write sigma of b minus sigma of a is also bigger than 0. And then I can just rearrange to get that sigma of b is bigger than sigma of a. Okay, so this means that sigma is, uh, in fact, order preserving. Um, so that's good. So we're still kind of working our way towards the result that we want, which is that sigma actually has to be the identity. Um, and uh, to get there now, we want to prove something else. So we want to prove that Now, if the following is true, so if I have a difference of two real numbers, and this is trapped in between uh, rational numbers like this,
then this in fact implies that uh, sigma of b minus sigma of a uh, is also between 1 over m and uh, negative 1 over m. Um, but this is an immediate consequence of we, uh, what we just showed, because we know that sigma is order preserving. So if we know that this first inequality right here is true, uh, then we definitely know that sigma of negative 1 over m is less than sigma of b minus sigma of a. And that's less than uh, sigma of 1 over m, because sigma is order preserving. Um, but sigma is assumed to be the identity on the rational numbers, because it's an element of the Galois group. And so here I can just replace sigma of negative 1 over m with negative 1 over m. Um, and I can do the same thing over here. Great. But now notice that uh, this actually implies that sigma is continuous. So again, sigma was just an arbitrary element of the Galois group, but uh, this now implies that it's actually a continuous function on R. Um, and the reason that's true is um, because if you pick epsilon bigger than zero um, and you want uh, in absolute value sigma of B minus sigma of A to be less than epsilon, well, all you have to do is uh, choose m uh, large enough so that 1 over m is less than epsilon, and then just choose b and a such that basically this inequality up here is true, right? So absolute b minus a um, is less than 1 over m. And then as long as that's true, um, we just showed that uh, sigma of b minus sigma of a is going to be trapped in between minus 1 over m and uh, 1 over m. And so this means that in absolute value, their difference is less than epsilon. So this is uh, what we actually just uh, proved, or um, this uh, property of sigma right here in, in implies that, um, that you can make this happen. Um, and so in fact, that means that uh, sigma is actually a continuous function. Um, and now we're actually almost done. Um, so we've just showed that sigma is continuous on R, um, but also that sigma fixes Q. Um, so those two things together, um, all we basically have to do now is just let x be um, a real number. And if you take um, any sequence of points xn that belong to the rational numbers um, and such that xn converges to x, and you know, if you know some of your basic properties of real numbers, you know you can always do this, right? So there's always a sequence of rational numbers that converges to every real number. Um, so by the continuity of uh, sigma that we just showed is true, um, sigma of xn has to converge to uh, sigma of x. This is one of the equivalent properties of continuity. Um, but because xn are uh, rational numbers, uh, sigma of xn is equal to xn for any choice of n. Um, and so this means that xn converges to sigma of x. So again, x was just an arbitrary real number. Here we have that there's a sequence xn that converges to x. And here the same sequence converges to sigma of x. And the only way that uh, this can be true is if sigma of x is equal to x because the limit of the sequence has to be unique. Um, so now, um, again, sigma was just any element of the, the Galois group. So sigma was just any element of G. And we just showed that sigma of x is equal to x for all x and r. Um, and so this means that uh, sigma is actually the identity. And so this uh, completes our proof. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, I think this is a very cool um, 
result because, uh, you know, R is like an infinite dimensional extension of Q. Um, you would imagine that, you know, just thinking about R over Q, that this might be an extension where the Galois group has all kinds of weird properties and there's a bunch of automorphisms in it. Um, but it turns out that uh, that's not true and that the Galois group is just trivial. So yeah, I think that's cool. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.